Do you find some students just flat out difficult to teach? Do you find some kids are wired differently from the way you are? G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. Welcome to Math in the News for another week in which we look at a video interview by Gary Vaynerchuk being interviewed by Larry King on the question of whether schools are failing entrepreneurs. This week I thought I'd look at something a little different, not an article in the news media as such, but a video interview between Larry King and Gary Vaynerchuk. Larry King you've probably heard of, but Gary Vaynerchuk maybe not. He's well known in the business world. He calls himself a serial entrepreneur. Um, he came from a Russian immigrant family in New York, I believe, and has been amazingly successful in uh, business and starting multiple companies and now speaks as a keynote speaker at conferences and is a, a leading light in all sorts of um, social online discussions and people come to him for advice on how to be successful. You can see a link to the interview here uh, below this video. Um, I encourage you to have a look. It's just a short excerpt from a longer video. It's only a minute and a half. But in that minute and a half, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about schools failing people like him, entrepreneurs, people who are going to go out and start businesses and do things that are different than no one's ever thought of. And he says quite clearly and quite passionately that he, he believes school isn't preparing people to be an entrepreneur or be like him. So it got me to thinking, what about other kids in our classes? What about students that are being taught right now? They might only be six years old or eight or nine or ten or twelve years old. They've got teachers who are teaching them what they need to know, hopefully, or what the teacher believes they need to know. Are they being prepared to be successful, as successful as possible? Or are teachers giving up on them because they don't fit some mould? Because that's the nature of being an entrepreneur, um, is that they don't fit a mould. You and I probably were very successful at school. I imagine if, if you're a teacher and you're watching this video, you did very well at school. You were probably good at following the rules. You were good at reading and writing. You are good at sitting still and listening to instructions and you know, you are a product of a system that promotes doing the right thing, following the rules, being uh, compliant to some extent, being um, friendly to others, you know, play well with other people and so on. So we can grow up with a mindset that that's the way everybody should be. And teachers sometimes have an approach, I know I've, I've noticed it in my own life at various times, I've thought you should be doing such and such, you know, and you see people who are just milling about waiting for something and you think you should be in a line, stand in a line, then we, you know, everybody gets their turn. Th there's a particular way of approaching the world and a, a way of thinking that school promotes and if you do well at school then you can go to university, you do well at university, you can get a good job and that sort of thing. But along the wayside, we're leaving people behind, perhaps, if that's the only thing we promote. It's worth thinking at this point about people who have been successful, and I mean um, amazingly, profoundly successful in life, and yet at school they were not. And many of them, it's quite interesting, I've been through um, several articles, I'll put links below the video, about people who failed at school but were successful um, in business and entrepreneurship and so on. Quite amazing the number who actually dropped out of school. They left school early and, you know, just didn't succeed. Albert Einstein, he dropped out of school at 15. Possibly the smartest man who ever lived. He didn't speak till he was four years old. He didn't read until he was seven. Just imagine his teachers, you know, I can imagine a little bit what it would be like to be his teacher. So, Albert, you're not going to be, you know, you need to work harder. You need to sit in, you know, get some extra help and so on. Thomas Edison, um, his teacher said he was too stupid to learn anything. Went on to become a prolific inventor. Richard Branson struggled with dyslexia, dropped out of school at 16. Benjamin Franklin, 15th out of 20 children, dropped out of school at 10 to work with his father. John D. Rockefeller dropped out of high school, went on to become history's first billionaire. Walt Disney dropped out of school at 16. Later he was fired by a newspaper editor because he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Charles Dickens left school at 12, went to work in a boot blacking factory. 
how would you or I have taught any one of those children when they were children, when they were at school, what would we have done? How could we have helped them to become successful? Would we have recognised a spark of talent, a spark of genius? Here are just a few suggestions from me. Basically, it's believe in every student. Believe that they have success built in them. Believe that they have value. Believe that they will be successful at something. Maybe we can't recognise it, maybe we don't know what it is. And secondly, tell the child that you believe in him or her. We should keep our eyes open for what makes a child tick, for what suddenly sparks an interest so we can take advantage of that. And then suggest that to the child's parents or to the child him or herself and say, you know, have you tried this or maybe... I've heard stories of teachers who went out and bought a book on a subject because they'd noticed an interest in a child and that book switched that child onto reading and suddenly sparked something in them that wasn't there before. And of course look out for the unlovely and the unloved student. It can be um, a salutary lesson I've, I found as a classroom teacher to ask students who their friends were. I got them to um, anonymous, well not anonymously, but in secret so other people didn't see what they were writing. Write down the names of their two or three best friends or those that they would like to work with in class. And I found when I mapped it all out on a big piece of paper and put circles with names and arrows showing friendships, there were two or three who, are, uh, who were amazingly popular. Everybody wanted to be their friend. And then there were two or three at the other end of the spectrum, if you like, had no one say they wanted to be their friend. And so, as you would, I made it my duty to find ways to reach out to those children and to show them that they were loved and cared for. Um, and so we may become perhaps the only person in a child's life who believes in them. And last of all, and this may sound a strange suggestion, but basically get out of the way and let them blossom. And I don't mean give them free reign to do whatever they want and let them misbehave or anything like that. Far from it. But at t don't be forever on their coast. Don't be forever trying to sort of keep them in this sort of pressure cooker and keep the pressure on them continuously until they break or anything like that. But rather give them opportunities to spread their wings and do different things. How do you approach this question of reaching the unlovely and and seeing success in a child who's not succeeding at school. Do leave a comment below the video. I'd love to hear what you have to say and hear how you approach it and you know what ideas you've got for, for reaching these children. Um, if you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already subscribed, there's a button here where you can subscribe to this channel so YouTube can let you know when new videos are released. These math in the news videos are coming out each week, so hopefully you'll be able to tune into future ones of those. There are other videos like this on the side. You can click on those right, and, right away and watch them. Uh, wherever you are, there's a space below this video to leave a comment, as I said before, um, and I hope to hear from you. That's it from me for now. I look forward to talking to you again very soon.